support. Okay, guys, thank you for attending. Um, I'm presenting this interesting family that I just recently met, okay? Um, so this is, so this is uh, the pedigree for this family that I recently met. As you can see, it's a large family. But this pedigree is not up to date yet because of the, uh, you know, of the volume of this family. It's, the family is really large. It's difficult to get up to date pedigree with detailed yeah, phenotype. But as you can see, there is a cardiomyopathy uh, diagnosis uh, in many family members. There's also, you can see my mouse, right? There's also a pacemaker need and uh, heart block in one of the, at least in one of them, there is a multiple sudden cardiac death um, in this family. Um, and even there is, besides cardiomyopathy, the predominant cardiomyopathy form was GCM, but there's also ARVC as well that is not shown on this pedigree, okay? So there's DCM, there is ARVC, there is conduction disease, there's sudden cardiac death uh, mul in multiple family members uh, of this family, okay? Um, it's difficult for me. I did not e review and evaluate each and every DCM, but uh, this is what is known in terms of diagnosis for the family members, okay? So when you encounter such a family, um, you, you wonder whether this family has a one diagnosis within the spectrum of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, which is a group of diagnoses, diagnoses uh, that uh, yeah, the feature with the predominant feature of arrhythmia plus muscle disease, okay? So whenever you see pedigree with extensive arrhythmia component plus cardiomyopathy component, you have to think of the A under the ACM or arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy umbrella, okay? but it has to be predominant arrhythmia, whether tachyarrhythmia or bradyarrhythmia, okay? And then the muscle disorder should not be explained by ischemia, hypertension, valvular heart disease, okay? That muscle disorder might affect the RV only, LV only, or both, okay? And then it may be part of a systemic disorder. For example, in adults, sarcoidosis, amyloidosis present with conduction disease and muscle uh, cardiac muscle disorder, or simply infection, inflammation, such as myocarditis, but more commonly genetic mutation, okay? And then in this family, per se, because you see multiple family members, you really wonder about the genetic mutation that runs in this family. And then um, given the pedigree without skipping of generation and multiple family members, you would guess it's an autosomal, autosomal dominant uh, mutation, okay? So the most common genotype or gene mutations that causes arrhythmia with muscle disorder or ACM are the following, okay? And then if you remember, we have a desmosomal or desmoplakin, which is a desmosomal protein. We have like four, already four families in Kuwait with desmoplakin slash desmosomal uh, gene mutation that causes, you know, mainly ALVC. Uh, and then, but this specific family, it turns out that they have Desmin mutation, okay? And I will speak in details of what is Desmin, okay? So that's the specific uh, gene, uh, gene mutation for this family. So, um, you know, remember there are so many genes that encodes for many proteins when the when those proteins are are mutated or when there is a gene mutation that uh, encodes for such proteins uh, the uh, phenotype or the patients might somewhat suffer from arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy of any cause okay uh, some mutations uh, specifically affect the rv and some mutations specifically affect the LV. For example, we, ha we had a presentation before for desmoplakin, which usually uh, affect the LV with arrhythmias, okay? So there are specific mutations, you know, affect RV, specific affect LV, and some affect both, okay? Make sense so far, guys? Okay, so those are mutations that affect the muscle, plus there is predominant arrhythmia feature, okay? 
So, um, so in general, cardiomyopathies are classified into DCM, dilated, HCM, hypertrophic, RCM, restrictive, ACM, which is arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, and LV non-compaction, okay? Uh, those cardiomyopathies may or may not be caused uh, from gene mutations, okay? Uh, and sometimes one gene mutation affect or, or present with different cardiomyopathies, okay? So one common example, or not common, one famous example is this gene, which encodes for Desmin, okay? Desmin is a protein filament within the cell, and uh, mutation in this gene that encodes Desmin uh, uh, is associated with all the known cardiomyopathies, uh, known with CCM, known with CCM, HCM, um, R, RCM, ACM, and LV non-compaction, okay? But it's still very rare. For example, less than 1% of DCM cases are actually caused by Desmond mutations, okay? So it's very rare. But when it happens, it might present in many different ways. Okay, so that's why it's difficult to diagnose. Okay, and then in addition, Desmond mutation also uh, might uh, present with uh, skeletal myopathies, whether isolated or combined. Okay, with, meaning combined skeletal plus cardiac myopathies. Okay, so this is an example of two pedigrees for you know different families, like uh, published pedigrees with Desmond mutations, and as you can see. <clears throat> There is DCM, there's heart block, there's ARVC, DCM, uh, transplant, heart block, uh, DCM, you know, heart block. There's, there's so many cardiomyopathies plus heart block. You know, there's sinus bradycardia, DCM, and sudden death in infancy and so forth. Here, as you can see, there is heart block, right bundle branch block, uh, DCM, RCM, heart block, RCM, you know, arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, heart block, and so forth, okay? So the phenotype is different despite being the exact same mutation. So those family members have the exact same mutation, but presenting differently in the same family, okay? Uh, if you remember from our arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy talk now more than a year ago, we, we talked about desmosomal proteins. We said these are the proteins that, that attach or glue uh, myocytes with each other. Okay, so that's a, the that's a myocyte. Um, this is one myocyte, and this is another myocyte, and then these are the proteins that at, that uh, glue the myocytes together. Okay, so these these group of proteins, sorry, these group of proteins are called desmosomal proteins. Okay, one of them was desmoplakin. If you remember, we had desmoplakin cardiomyopathy case that we presented before. So that desmoplakin actually connects with, with Desmin. If you see this cartoon here, so this is desmoplakin DSP, and then this is where Desmin comes in, okay? So Desmin actually connects with the desmosomal proteins and then um, is, uh, connects different cell organelles uh, to each other. So for example, it connects to the nucleus, it connects to the mitochondria, it connects to the Z bands and so forth, okay? So these red lines are the Desmin uh, filaments, okay? So Desmin is the one part of the cytoskeleton network of the cell or myocyte, providing strength and integrity to the cell, okay? So, so it's a very highly flexible protein, okay? It provides flexibility to the cell. And then, like we said, it connects different cell organelles and protein complexes to the cell, okay? It is expressed in cardiac muscle. Uh -huh. It is expressed in the cardiac muscle, okay? Uh, plus the conduction tissue. That's why there is so much heart block and arrhythmia uh, in such patients, okay? It is also expressed in skeletal muscles and smooth muscles, okay? And then, so like we said, it might present with combined myopathy mainly skeletal and cardiac, okay? Smooth muscles are spared usually, okay? So patients might have cardiac disease plus skeletal muscle disease, okay? Or isolated skeletal muscle disease or isolated cardiac disease, okay? Um, questions so far? Okay, easy, guys? 
Yes, yes, Dr. Mohamed. I'm trying to simplify things, okay? Okay, so um, some, you know, DES mutations or uh, the gene that encodes for DESMIN uh, are associated with incomplete penetrance, meaning there is the phenotype is weak, but very often it is a progressive, it is progressive in nature and hence it presents usually later in life, roughly third decade of life, okay? But there are, there are reports of disease onset in, in during infancy and at, in the pediatric age group. So we still might see them. And then this, is, this family is large and uh, there's already a couple of family members that are young with the disease manifestation, okay? So this is why I'm presenting this case because we will get to see them, you know, as, you know, uh, in the near future, okay? Um, it was first described in 1998, by the way, and it is mainly autosomal dominant disease, okay, mainly. There, is, there are autosomal recessive forms, but mainly autosomal disease, uh, uh, dominant disease, okay? So, the uh, pathognomonic feature or the hallmark for the disease is desmin aggregation within the cytoplasm, okay? So, normally, so this is SW13 cells are cells devoid of desmin, like they are, um, they are, uh, um, you know, genetically made without desmin, okay? So when you inject uh, the normal desmin into these cells, the green lines are what the normal desmin should look uh, or is looking like in this, in such cells, okay? And then H9C2 cells are cells with Exp that expresses normal desmin, and this is how it looks like, okay? You see green microtubules throughout the cell, okay? The, uh, the, when you inject the DNA material that with the mutated desmin, and by the way, this is exactly our patient mutation, so R127P, so when you, so this is a paper that is still in preprint, meaning it's under uh, evaluation or uh, peer review, uh, but so, the, but they injected the exact same mutation for our family into this cell, which is devoid of desmin, like we said, and then the desmin uh, forms uh, in aggregates. You see, so in, 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 instead of being nice and well-formed filament structures, it is more more circular structures and uh, disorganized uh, aggregates. Okay, and then furthermore, when they inject the the R127P mutated uh, desmin gene, or this is the protein, when they in the, when they injected the desmin uh, gene with with such mutation, the uh, the uh, it also um, disorganizes. Uh, it also dis is disorganized into the cell, and the cell also does not form nice, well formed filament structure. Rather. It's again disorganized, uh, disorganized desmins. So, it, so you remember this cell already has the wild normal desmin, but when you inject DNA material that encodes the abnormal desmin, that abnormal desmin also affects the normal desmin and makes it, you know, not functioning. Makes sense, guys? So it's like it, it has a dominant negative effect. Makes sense, guys? Yes, Dr. Muhammad. Yeah. Okay, so this is very important. So. This is how Desmond should look like, and this is what Desmond looks like in mutated Desmond um, gene, okay? And this is exactly our patient uh, genotype, okay? Mutated gene, okay? So Desmond undergoes a uh, uh, process of lateral annealing and elongation into fibers. And then when there is any, when there is any mutation uh, in Desmond, uh, that is pathogenic, it will lead to aggregate formation of desmin and abnormal desmin function, okay? There are many uh, animal models with specific desmin mutations and like cardiac disease, for example, cardiomyopathy, cardiac fib fibrosis, myopathies, AFib, in this case, also smooth muscle defects, DCM, you know, and so forth, okay? So there is so much phenotype difference um, but there's definitely many, you know, definitely um, uh, car heavily, it's, it, you know, cardiac involvement, heavily, uh, it, it like specifically affects the cardiac muscle so much, okay? Um, so um, again, when we have mutation in Desmond, 
uh, this uh, Desmond is disorganized. And this, uh, the, the, so at, as such, the complex cytoskeletal network of the cell is disorganized, okay? And this disrupts the sarcomere, the myofibril organization, and eventually or consequently leads to abnormal cell elasticity, okay? Uh, and then remember, like we said, Desmond also um, um, communicates with mitochondria nucleus. So then patient might also have impairment of mitochondrial function, okay? Okay, so again, this is our, remember R127P, this is exactly our family mutation. Um, so why is, this, why is this mutation pathogenic? Because first of all, it has been published. It has been published only once. And then uh, when I reached out to the author of the publication, which is by the way, um, uh, from University of Chicago back in 2014, I believe, 2014, yes. Uh, this, this, this patient was actually from Kuwait. So this patient that was previously published uh, is actually from Kuwait. So, uh, so this is exact same, this is a one family member of, the, of our patients, okay? So this is exact the same family, okay? So this patient, this is the, um, was uh, traveled to, to University of Chicago because of transplant evaluation, okay? So she, she started, the disease started at 32 years of age. She had so much VT, she had AFib, and then she had cardiac dysfunction. So they eventually implanted biventricular ICD. However, the cardiac dysfunction was worsening. And at the age of 43, roughly 13, uh, sorry, 11 years later, she underwent cardiac transplant in University of Chicago, okay? And then like, you, like we know, there are so many multiple family members of sudden cardiac death and DCM and ARVC and heart block, okay? So this is, this is the, so when they, you know, they, they did genetic testing for this patient, and this was the mutation. And this, this is, was, you know, a cousin of, of the patient that I saw, okay? Uh, so, so um, um, they took a muscle specimen from the transplanted heart, okay? And they noted, so first of all, the, uh, that mutation is, by the way, not present in European uh, databases, like when they when they do genetic testing for normal individuals, there is no, they they do not see that mutation present in the normal population. Okay, which is a sign of di this mutation being significant. Okay, also when they did, you know, when they do compute computerized uh, algorithm uh, to predict the uh, how the protein would work uh, with the damaged meat with the with this specific substitu substitution the computer predicted uh, abnormal protein and damaged protein uh, products, okay? So that's again, a sign of um, disease causing mutation or pathogenic mutation, okay? And then, so back to the, back to the, uh, trans the, the explanted heart. So this is the specimen from the uh, explanted heart. And then I know it's difficult to see, but there are, you see these dark, dark dots, these are Desmond aggregates inside the, this patient cardiac myocytes. Okay, guys, do you see it? I mean, I know it's a little bit difficult, but you know, you see these, uh, and we're not just pathologists, but these are apparently the Desmond aggregates, the, the, the dark circles, okay? Um, and then, so this is, so this is the, the patient transplanted, uh, explanted heart, okay? And then, Again, when they introduced a mutated gene uh, that encodes for R127P uh, into myocyte cell, they do they did see again um, Desmond aggregations here. Okay, and then this is how it should look. It should look like it's like elongated fibers. Okay, so again, um, they uh, you know they proved Desmond aggregation, and hence this is a, a sign of disease causing mutation. Okay, guys. So this is the paper that I showed previously. Um, so this is a group from Germany, not published yet, but like we said before, they, the SW13 cells, the, uh, when they, you know, when they inject normal Desmond, this is how it should look like. And then this is how it looks like for the H9C2 cells, which have intrinsic expression of normal Desmond, okay? 
So when they inject the DNA, uh, the DNA mutated DNA desmin for our, like, similar to our patient, the desmin aggregates and disorganizes. And then when they inject it into this, the, the uh, wild expression, uh, the, the wildly producing desmin cells, it also uh, ruins the normal desmin function of the, of the cells, okay? So there is dominant negative effect again, okay? Makes sense, guys? Yani, uh, to repeat myself, this cell has no normal desmin expression. They inject the mutated desmin uh, gene, and then desmin uh, dis is dis uh, forms with disorganization. Okay, and then this cell has already normal desmin uh, production, but when they injected the new the mutated gene, uh, DNA material, that uh, mutated desmin ruins the normal forming desmin in this cell. Okay, guys. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So also another evidence of pathogenic mutation for this, you know, and specifically for this family is that it co-segregates within the family. So for meaning, you know, when you have multiple family members with disease and you, uh, you, you, you screen, you do gene testing, and then you find a specific mutation. And if that mutation is present in all family members with the disease, you know that this is probably disease causing. And if you see that, um, um, but if you see, for example, one family member with a disease without that specific mutation, then you know this is not disease causing because why would this patient has the same disease without the same gene mutation? Make sense, guys? So when you when you have a large family with a new mutation that was not previously, uh, and it's not known to cause to cause disease, co uh, not known as a disease causing mutation, you have to screen the entire family and make sure that it co-segregates, meaning you wanna make sure that the mutation is present in all positive uh, phenotypes, okay? In all family members with the disease. Okay, guys? Make sense, this point? This is why we screen the, you know, this is why we have to yes. screen the entire family to be more sure, okay? Yeah? Okay, yes. Okay, yes, yes, Dr. Mahat. Okay, and then. So like we said, um, that R127P variant was not observed in European and African uh, databases, okay? Or normal individuals, okay? The, this specific substitution occurs at a position that is conserved across species, meaning it's a very important um, location, okay? It's present in multiple species, not just humans, okay? And then, when when the uh, when they they there are programs that predict the uh, the protein function, the, such programs predicted damaging protein function and structure. Okay, so there are so many points that this gene mutation is actually disease causing. Okay, and remember this is the only uh, known family in the world with this mutation. Okay, that's why we have to be careful. And, lay, and make sure that is truly disease causing, okay? Um, you know, the, this is, so this is the uh, Desmond, um, you know, uh, protein. And uh, if, so our mutation is, uh, is in location 127. So our location, our, our uh, mutation is here. And if you, if you, if you note, there are so many pathogenic mutations next to our mutation, okay? So it's like, this is like a hotspot for disease causing, uh, hotspot area for disease causation, okay? So that's another point, another suggestion that our mutation is actually real, okay? Um, and then like, you know, our, so that, for example, this mutation does, is known to cause GCM, okay? This mutation, this mutation, all known to cause GCM. And our, well, man, many of our family members are, uh, many of our, of the family members in this family do actually have GCM, which makes sense because, you know, these are all GCM uh, known uh, mutations and our mutation is 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 close by, okay? Um, so what we know so far, um, we, we believe that that this mutation is actually disease causing for this family. Um, and, uh, you know, 
for all patients who are symptomatic, obviously, if they have heart failure uh, symptoms or manifestations, yeah, you want to manage their heart failure uh, component. And then also you want to do transplant evaluation because they are it's a progressive disease and uh, many would require eventually transplantation, okay? If they do have arrhythmia, whether brady or tachyarrhythmia, you should have probably low threshold to implant an ICD because uh, again, there are so many sudden cardiac deaths in, the, in our family specifically and many other family with different mutations in Desmond, okay? So it's a, it's a, it, it is known to cause, uh, frequently cause sudden cardiac arrest, okay? And then if you wanna implant the ICD, you probably should think of biventricular type because you know that there is cardiac muscle disease associated. So, um, you know, if, if, if should this patient develop cardiac muscle disease, you might benefit, uh, the patient might benefit from biventricular pacing, okay? I mean, obviously it depends on the age and how and, um, and so forth. And then, you know, knowing that more, uh, you know, the more leads in the heart, there are associated more complications so you have to balance. But this is something to keep in mind, of, you know, to keep to keep an eye on or uh, be thinking of, okay? And if they are asymptomatic, you know, it's progressive in, in nature. So maybe um, they will, may they may or may not be symptomatic one day, but uh, during this window of them being asymptomatic, you have to closely monitor them, okay? Um, so uh, obviously you ha we have to do, we have to continue the our family screening. This family is so large and the family scre screening is not yet completed. Um, we have to educate the family members with, you know, BLS training, you know, home AED, maybe school AED, maybe work AED, because again, they are at risk of sudden cardiac death, okay? There is unfortunately no specific therapy available for Desmond in general. Okay, as I said, for those who are asymptomatic, we should probably have low threshold for loop implantation, loop recorder implantation to monitor for arrhythmias, whether Brady or Techie arrhythmias. And like we said, if there is an indication for pacing, maybe we should consider ICD rather than pacemaker because there's also associated arrhythmias, Techie arrhythmias as well. And then also we might we we probably should consider biventricular pacing because of the risk of progressive cardiac muscle disease, okay? Um, so subcutaneous, if you remember from previous talks, we did talk about ICD types. One is epicardial, which is not shown here. One is transvenous across the veins, and one is under the skin. So this lead is, is between the skin and the and the sternum, okay? So there's nothing intra intravascular, okay? Uh, but the problem with this with with this setup is that it doesn't pace the heart because it's painful to pace the heart because it's it's like subcutaneous pacing, okay? So because knowing that the, such patients are at risk of heart block, so this option is might not be perfect for them, okay? So we might lean more toward transvenous pacing or uh, uh, devices because of the knowing the, the uh, knowing how the disease usually progress and manifests okay and uh, obviously you know you might want to refer them to heart failure specialist you know you might want to do transplant evaluation um, you know sooner rather than later and then you know like we usually we like we usually sometimes might do is when we see vt or pvcs or whatever we might give beta blockers but for this specific population you know we worry about giving beta blockers because there's a risk of progressive heart block for them right so i would not be very comfortable you know giving antiarrhythmic medication without backup pacing okay so uh, you know so this is a very tricky mutation you probably should be aggressive with them. Uh, and you cannot just give medication with that backup pacing. Makes sense, guys, what I'm saying? Yeah, makes sense. So may uh... Yes. Yeah. OK. Yeah. OK. Um, so in general, you know, ACM for all ACM uh, patients, you know, there are guidelines when to implant ICD. Usually, usually, if they suffered from cardiac arrest already, or they had um, VT, 
um, or their function is less than 35% and so forth, you, you implant an ICD, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I mean, there are uh, multiple diagnoses within ACM. So each, each specific mutation has a specific require, like ICD indications that you can look, you can look at this table for, but generally, uh, in general, if the EF is, is low, if there is a history of cardiac arrest, if there is history of uh, sustained VT, ICD is indicated already, okay? Um, you know, for Desmond, we, you know, we don't, we, there are so many unknowns. We don't know, uh, you know, what, whether stress test is helpful. We don't know whether, you know, I mean, how, you know, we don't know when to, we don't have, we don't know when to predict, you know, conduction disease. We don't know when to predict the arrhythmia uh, onset. We don't know when to predict, you know, the muscle disorder, okay? So it's a little bit very tricky to manage. We don't know whether denervation therapy is beneficial for them. Remember, for, for example, CPVT or long QT, denervation therapy might be beneficial, but for Desmond, uh, probably not. We don't know. Okay, we don't know whether is is restriction from sports, for example, is beneficial to them. Will it will it avoid you know uh, sudden cardiac arrest cases? We don't know. It's unclear. But there's no evidence that you know that the sudden cardiac arrest that happened in this family or uh, previous families with other Desmond mutations are happening only during exercise. Usually not. Okay, so I don't think exercise is related. Okay. And then say this patient has monomorphic VT. Is it is that VT uh, you know amenable for catheter ablation? And if so, is it curative for the patient? We really don't know. So for example, the family the 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 patient that I saw had um, you know had uh, slow. Uh, VT, uh, you know, while sleep, okay, on a prolonged Holter monitor. So the question is, is this significant VT? Is this life-threatening VT? Is this, yeah, any, is that VT that we saw, uh, you know, um, because we saw that VT, now we should implant ICD or not? It's a very diff complex question to, to answer. You know, we do see in slow VT while asleep, uh, in you know normal people, and we usually not we don't usually overreact to it. But for this specific uh, family, you know it's a little bit tricky. Okay, um, so you know this patient may or may not receive an ICD uh, because of this finding. Okay, um, so you know so um, so you know unfortunately there are so many unknowns. Okay. But, um, you know, I think I'm sure with time, people would understand the disease better, okay? Okay, so in summary, um, this family um, would be, you know, we would see more and more family members from this family. So be prepared, but in summary, uh, Desmond mutation cause different, causes different forms of cardiomyopathies, okay? and skeletal myopathies, okay? Um, the, the majority of pathogenic Desmond mutation causes Desmond aggregation in the cytoplasm, and hence uh, the structural, uh, the, the my, the, uh, this disorganization of the Desmond affects the myocytes function, okay? And unfortunately, there is no specific ther therapy for any Desmond pathology or desminopathy or desmin related cardiomyopathy yet um, but hopefully this would change in the future okay so that's today was a short uh, I think this is our shortest EP conference uh, any questions I thought it's interesting to share because that was you know it's a very rare disease I have never seen it before I only saw it now in Kuwait and uh, that mutation is only is only known for this family, uh, like worldwide. Okay, so it's a very, this uh, this is a very unique family. No one else is exposed to this mutation anywhere in the world. Okay, so um, whatever we learn from this family, 
uh, you know, is uh, is beneficial, and we, you know, we our goal is to avoid ca further casualties, of course, because this family lost so many family members. Okay, questions. Questions, guys. So only the curative is a heart to transplant. Well, yeah, I mean, if they, if, you know, it's, it's a progressive disease. So, you know, the function would decline slowly. And then at some point, I mean, obviously you start heart failure me medications and if they are not responding, uh, eventually they might need transplant. And, um, you know, if there is any evidence of arrhythmia, we should probably have low threshold for ICD implantation. Okay. Uh, because we, you know, it looks like it's a very, it's aggressive mutation and there are so many sudden cardiac arrests in this family like more than seven you know so uh, six or seven at least this is what we that was what i know of okay the, mm -hmm. the, the problem is you know when they are presenting when they are if they present when, during you know at young age like our in, in the pediatric age group it's obviously more challenging because you know implantation of icd at at the younger age group is more complicated compared to you know when they are adults you know okay. so yeah so hopefully hopefully uh, you know we don't see disease like manifestation in pediatrics age group but we might see one day i mean this this patient that i saw is 14 years old so she's you know pediatric and this is the one that has slow vt and this is the one that we have to think whether she needs icd or not we're still we're still wondering whether she needs icd or not okay but this will not affect the gene, will not affect the new heart if she underwent no, no, if she, Yeah, if she underwent cardiac transplantation, then خلاص, it's like uh, we, there is no, I mean, that the skeletal myopathy might, pres might persist, of course, but the cardiac disease, the, you know, the cardiac myopathy would go away. Then you, you, mm -hmm. you are dealing with transplant issues and rejection and, you know, mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah. But then That's the cardiac, true. the cardiac disease would be, you know, cured, but you you are giving her another cardiac disease which is transplanted heart you know so yeah. any other questions uh, uh, dr mohammed uh, according uh, regarding to medications yeah. uh, we have medications عشان anti failure measures هاي yeah. الميديكيشنز اللي ممكن بياخدها الانتي yeah, failure like... measures العاديه ومعاها مثلا حاجه معينه anti arrhythmic no, I, I, yeah, like I said, I wouldn't give like beta blockers or digoxin because they are prone to conduction disease. Remember, Desmond is is heavily expressed in the in the conduction tissue. Okay, so I worry that when you give beta blocker or digoxin or metoprolol or carvedilol, uh, you know, you enhance the uh, the uh, conduction disease phenotype. Okay, so without backup pacing i would avoid it so that's why it's important for you guys to know if you see this family you know and they have heart dysfunction i would avoid carvedilol metoprolol digoxin and so forth because of this concern unless they have a pacemaker or icd already okay okay makes sense okay. only diuretics only diuretics if needed yeah i mean diuretics, ace oh, after diuretics if needed yeah and I, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mohammed, is there yeah. any uh, phenotypic uh, markers that can indicate the disease in, a, in the family other than uh, the yeah, it, dysfunction, a skeletal you, muscle dysfunction? And well, what, you, you, is there any chance to know the family so that we can take care? I cannot, I did not hear you very well, but the, the first question is you, you, we can only, you can only identify this patient by knowing the family history, of course, and by genetic screening. I mean, there's no MRI, find, specific MRI finding or specific echo finding or specific ECG finding or specific dysmorphic feature finding. The only way you diagnose this patient, the I mean, future patient is by doing gene mutation or gene testing. Plus knowing that he's a relative of this family member, you know. Makes sense, Adnan? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're not like, for example, we presented previously decimal plaque in cardiomyopathy. I don't know whether you remember, but there is specific MRI finding. There is specific ECG findings. For ARVC, there is a ECG you know, findings you know, that you could look for. But in this case, there's no known specific uh, yeah, any ECG findings or echo findings or MRI findings that you look for. You have to suspect it based on the family history, skeletal myopathy, conduction disease, cardiac arrest, cardiac dysfunction. And you know, for again, for all ACM patients, any patient with arrhythmia with cardiac dysfunction, you should you should do genetic testing, okay? And then you'll identify it with genetic testing. Is the genetic testing available in Kuwait? Yeah, of course, yeah. This type, this yeah. type, is, uh, as you said, it's not available. It's not an European one, so it may not be in the panel. Is no, no, so, in, in the panel in Kuwait. Yeah, 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 the panels that we use is, uh, yeah, is, uh, is from, um, yeah, from companies, not uh, invented in Kuwait, okay? So the panels, they uh, look for all, uh, they look for Desmond, uh, and then if there's any mutation in the, in the Desmond, uh, they would report the mutation, and then it's up to you as a physician to figure out that mutation in Desmond is significant or not significant? Is it pathogenic or likely pathogenic or unknown significance or negative or no, or there is no mutation? You know, I mean, the genetic company or the whether it's in, done in Kuwait or somewhere else, it would just tell you if there's Desmond mutation and then they, the uh, geneticist would, would, would formulate a report and labeling that mutation as pathogenic or likely pathogenic or VUS or negative. But then you, as a physician or as a clinician, you should clarify and uh, you know look it up and make sure make sure you agree with the geneticist evaluation. Okay. So uh, this specific mutation was not found. Uh, Doctor Mohammed, yes, normal African and European uh, uh, individuals. Okay. Yes, Adnan, did I answer your question? Make sense. Yeah, it makes sense. So yeah. uh, we can screen for it in our uh, available uh, commercial yes. Uh, yes, cardiomyopathy yes. kit. But yes. to diagnose it specifically, then you have to take it further. Step yeah, further. and you'll get the report. The report will say there is Desmond mutation, maybe VUS, variant of unknown significance, meaning they are not sure whether it's disease causing or not. Then you, as a clinician, you have to figure it out. Okay? And then there are means for you to figure it out. Uh, you know, such as screening the rest of the family and making sure each diseased family member have the mutation. For example, you can send biopsy to a research lab and they look for the aggreg Desmond aggregation in, in the tissue of your patients and so forth. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, Fatma. Go on. Ask a question. سؤالي دكتور محمد هل احنا ممكن نشخصها فقط بالهيستوباثولوجي من غير الجينيتيك ستاد؟ Well, I mean, how would you do this histopathology? يعني, you mean بالكويت or you mean؟ يعني هل يا دكتور محمد انت شايف ان احنا لو اي حالة كارديو مايوباتي تبقى من ال ال work up بتاعها ان احنا نعمل cardiac cath and taking a biopsy for histopathology I mean, I mean, this will help, but I mean, who would, do we have? Yes, this will help, but do we have? Cardiomyopathy. Yeah, yeah, this will help, but do do we have a pathologist that, yeah, I mean, would be able to figure this out? It will be difficult. You need specific expertise, you know. For locally, yeah, yeah but we, I don't think, yeah, I mean, we don't have a pathologist that has the expertise, so. Here in Kuwait, the only thing you could do is genetic testing. And then if we are not understanding the patient, then we could do the extra yeah. steps. But you send them usually to a research lab, you know, not locally. Yeah. Like they do these such functional studies on the tissue itself, you know? So, okay. okay. Luck luckily for us, this patient went to oh. University of Chicago and they yes. did it for yes. us, you know? Okay. <laughs> and then... And then there's this group in Germany also did, they uh -huh. don't have the patient, but they did uh, functional study using the exact same gene mutation, you know? So, so the functional studies were done twice in University of Chicago and the, the, in this Germany uh, uh, hospital yeah. and both uh, confirmed Desmond aggregation, okay? 
so this is yani this is uh, yeah this is yani uh, okay like we uh, this yes. tells you that this is actually disease causing arafte makes sense yeah okay. 